This uh, view from the pew is from October 2006. In August, I recounted how the struggles of a woodlouse and a spider so occupied my attention as to take my mind completely off an Episcopal sermon. This month, I tell the tale of a chapel service I attended many, many years ago when I heard the words but didn't get the message. At one point in the per service, members stood to express their personal concerns in prayer. They did not use the language of the prayer book, familiar to Anglican ears, but, like most Christians, used everyday language. However, the words were from the heart, and so my mind was kindly disposed to listen. And I often pray that way myself. Extemporaneously, I think we call it. My calm, however, was rocked when one gentleman stood and in a voice reminiscent of the late Ian Paisley announced, Hi there, God! He then continued in similar matey terms as though the Almighty had both a parochial vocabulary and, and a hearing problem. However, there was no doubting the man's sincerity or that, during his prayer, he had a picture of God in his mind. Unfortunately, on that occasion, I was incapable of sharing his picture. This was not because I did not want to, it was simply that my mind had stopped listening to the words and instead started to analyse their style. Why, I wondered, was the man whom I knew to have a good grasp of English, not exploring its depth, breadth and nuances during his one-sided chat with God. Subsequently, I mused about the language of prayer and remembered that the Japanese have a special vocabulary solely for use during moments of gravitas and deepest significance. Japanese poets also use this vocabulary. Similarly, the poet in me loves the formalities and the rhythms of the Book of Common Prayer, especially at key moments in life. However, a style of prayer is a personal choice and, frankly, each to his own. I know that Jesus gave us a model prayer but whatever our own style of prayer, I am sure that we must be clear as to its purpose. And at the same time, we must take care not to presume what God's response to our prayer will be. The dangers of trying to do God's thinking for him can be seen in the story of the mother who tried to second-guess the mind of her daughter. The little girl had a lively pet, a lively pet Jack Russell, named Rupert. And one day, whilst the girl was at school, the dog unexpectedly died. The mother agonised on how best to tell the gentle-spirited child. With these concerns weighing heavily on her mind, but confident that the girl would be heartbroken, she determined to break the news slowly. When the girl skip, skipped in from school, the mother sat her down gravely, but carefully said, I have some very sad news for you, and you must try hard not to cry. Rupert has died, but you're not to worry, because he's gone to Jesus. The girl froze, went silent, and Mum feared the worst. After a long silence, and with a puzzled expression on her face, 
the girl replied. What on earth would Jesus want with a dead dog?